We start today's sports tour with breaking news from Old Trafford that has been, you know, that needs some renovations and some um, re-modifications. Manchester United have sacked manager Eric Ten Hag following the club's poor start to the season. Ten Hag's final game was Sunday's 2-1 defeat by West Ham that left the club 14th in the Premier League table with just three wins from their opening nine matches. A dismal performance from Manchester United so far in their illustrious history. And United are also 21st out of 36 teams on the revamped Europa League table, having drawn all three of their opening fixtures. Dutch striker and Manchester United legend Ruud van Nistelrooy, who joined the club as Ten Hag's assistant last summer, has been named as the interim manager and the Dutchman was informed of the decision by the club's board on Monday, fewer than 24 hours after the club's defeat by West Ham at the London Stadium on Sunday afternoon. The club triggered a one-year contract extension uh, in Ten Hag's deal following May's FA Cup final victory over City rivals Manchester City. But just three months later, he has been dismissed after overseeing Manchester United's second worst start to a Premier League campaign. To discuss this breaking news with me is Felix the Great, a Bomuche sports presenter, Las Giri Radio. He's also a sports producer, a content creator, and a Manchester United fan. Felix the Great, welcome to um, Sports Store. My United have sacked Eric Ten Hag as uh, the coach. Okay. Let me guess. Which station is that? Felix the Great. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome um, to the program. Josh. Yeah, um, breaking news this morning. I, I, I'm not sure we were many that thought um, he was going to survive beyond uh, what uh, many fans had hoped would have happened a while back. Uh, but yes, uh, Eric Ten Hag sacked as Manchester United manager is not something that would have shocked many people. The, the only shock is it is happening this early in the morning, maybe a bit later in the day, that would have been different for some people. But I, I, I don't think Manchester United fans all over the world would feel any sort of sadness. I think or, there's a party uh, going on. About... There's a celebration. Yeah, there is celebration. I, I am in a couple of uh, platforms, a couple of groups where Manchester United fans, they, some of them even on my show this morning, they were calling have they announced the sack of Eric Ten Hag? They don't sack this man in Pigeon Palace, as you say, uh, in Nigeria. Yeah, I, I, and I, I'm sure there will be jubilation for rival fans. Maybe except Liverpool. I, I have seen some Chelsea fans, some Arsenal fans. They've been crying. They said they should, they should have waited for uh, Chelsea and Arsenal to play against Manchester United before uh, they do the honours of sacking Eric Ten Hag. But let's see if a new manager bounce would help United scale through against those teams. Okay, so Ruth Van Nistelrooy, um, Golden Boot winner at uh, when he was a player at United, something where Rooney didn't manage to do, although he didn't win the PFA, something where Rooney managed to do, something that Cristiano Ronaldo did, winning the uh, uh, player PFA Player of the Year, winning the Golden Boots twice as well. So, do you think that Ruth Van Nistelrooy can lead United to the promised land, or in the interim, can he do what at least? Oli Sosha did when he started off as United manager in the interim? I feel it is more uh, of the latter than the former. Okay. Uh, I don't think Ruth Van Nistelrooy is seen as a long-term uh, replacement for Ten Hag by Manchester. Even the statement that United released, they said um, Van Nistelrooy will stay on the interim while the club continues to search for a permanent manager. So that, that is probably uh, communication that would have been uh, sent to him, would have been told that is just for the meantime, just help us steady the ship, just help us handle training sessions because there has to be somebody uh, that needs to be uh, there. Yes, uh, there has to be somebody that needs to be there as the coach of the team. But yes, I, I think Ruth Van Nistelrooy for now, for now, it will steady the ship. He's somebody that has handled the club side previously. He's done PS, PSV yeah, uh, in the middle yeah. second. So he has experience managing a top flight team. So it's not like it is a new uh position for him but let's see how it goes but if he goes there and he does first game second game 10 games in and the results are good they might begin to consider him and i, I don't think 
that should be uh something that united should do but it oh, is not wow. manchester united they can get lost in the results and decide to make Ruth Vanisteroy the permanent manager of the team. But if you don't think Ruth Vanisteroy is good enough to become a full-time manager during the summer when you were looking for a new coach, I don't think if he does well in five, six, seven, eight, maybe ten games. Maybe even maybe even twelve coach. games. I, I don't I don't think they should consider him for a permanent position because they did not consider him good enough in the summer. He was available all summer. They were looking for a manager. Instead, they brought him to assist Eric Ten Hag. So I, I would not want them to go on the spot of the moment because he plays maybe one or two games and the team plays well. And then you appoint him as permanent manager and they will get their Ole Gunnar uh, sort of situation. Although some people will argue that if you give the Ole Gunnar example, there is a Mikel Ateta that came in as interim too as okay. Asna uh, before he got the job on the permanent and see what he has done with it. But let's see how it goes. But I, I feel like majority of United fan base, 95, 96, 97, maybe 99% of the fan base, I would actually be happy that Eric Ten Hag is gone and there's somebody else handling the boys. Okay, I, I know you're a very busy man. Seems like you guys are preparing for another show to talk about this particular incident. Uh, so quickly, before I let you go, if you had the keys to the kingdom at Old Trafford that would soon be demolished for New Trafford, who will you bring in as the new United manager? Even if you can poach someone realistically from any club, let's say a manager that you know is realistically going to come to Manchester United. We know Pep Guardiola wouldn't come to Man United. So a realistic poaching or even anyone who is free that can come to Man United. So off the top of my head, there are two options. Uh, one is free uh, and out of a job right now, or it does not seem to fancy the United job. That is anything to them. Okay. Uh, that is somebody I have said. He has the clouds, he has the experience, he has done it at the highest level. These players uh, probably might suit the way he plays because he would give them that freedom. And, he has come in, and, he, and his first stint was as interim to Real Madrid coming yeah. in like this and then yeah. taking over for three years straight. Yeah, so I, I think Zenedine Zidane, if we are talking about managers who are out there and available. Um, I would have said Nagusman, but I don't think that is um, a realistic target. He just signed an extension with a uh, German national yeah. team and they are looking to have him there to the World Cup. So that is out of the window. Then if you talk to somebody that I don't also think is going to be an easy pick to get for Manchester United, but could be realistic because the jump from Inter to Manchester United is like big. The money, uh, the challenge would be very exciting for Inzaghi. I don't know how that would be possible to do mid-season. But maybe get with Van Nistelrooy to drag United to the end of the season or maybe by January and see if they can bring in Inzaghi. But those are my picks. Zidane for the managers who are available and out there, but he does not seem to fancy the United job. And then Izagi, if they are going to go all out to try and coach somebody else uh, from somewhere. And then um, lastly, I know I said uh, last in the previous question, Simon Izagi, three man defense. Do you think a three man backline can work with the personnel that United have? I, I think it should work. It can work. Uh, United have a lot of centre backs that can play in a three-man defense if they decide to go for Inzaghi. Lisandro Martinez, I feel, for me, I feel is more of a left-sided centre-back in the back three than a two, or like a five and six, like we call them okay. uh, in this part. But maybe uh, Lisandro Martinez on the left-hand side, the Ligt on the right-hand side, and then uh, all in Euro on the right-hand side, the Ligt in the middle uh, of the back three, and there is Maguire somewhere there, there is Lindelof somewhere there, uh, Jeremy Evans also uh, somewhere there with the experience that he has. I feel like he, those, those are players that can work under Izagi. But he's also showed that he can actually uh, mix it up. Can play with a four, he can play with a three. Predominantly, he does with a three uh, at the back, but he can also play with a four. So I, I think if he comes, I'm not sure that would be uh, a big problem. And he would have next summer to try and bring in the players that he feels can do the job for him. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Felix the Great, a uh, sports presenter, producer, Las Gidi Radio. Uh, thank you for your time and for joining us on Sports Store on Enterprise Television. Thank you. You're always welcome. Yeah, and definitely let's uh, go over to the headlines and give you all that we have for you right here on Sports Store for the day. Car 
awards three points, three goals to Nigeria, finds Libya over botched AFCON 2025 qualifier. Justice to Nigeria. And in an international friendly, Rashid Ajibade scores a brace to lead the Super Falcons to victory over Algeria's Green Eagles. The Flying Eagles of Nigeria top Niger Republic 3 1 to qualify for the 2025 AFCON Under 20 Nations Cup and will face Ghana in the Wafu B final. In the FIFA Under 70 Women's World Cup, the Flamingos eliminated after a shock 2 0 loss to USA in the quarterfinals. And in club football, Barcelona trashed Real Madrid. 4-0 in El Clasico as Arsenal held by late Liverpool rally while Juventus fight back to draw 4-0 against Inter Milan in the Derby d'Italiano at San Siro. Let's take a short break on Sports Tour. When we return, we'll dive into our package for the day. Welcome back to Sports 2 and let's start off with the fact that the disciplinary body of the Confederation of African Football, CAF, has awarded Nigeria three points and three goals from the botched match day four encounter of the 2025 AFCON qualifying series scheduled to be played in, uh, by Libya and Nigeria in Benin on 15th October. In its ruling on Saturday, signed by the chairman Osmani Kane, the disciplinary body ruled that one, the Libya Football Federation is found to have breached Article 31 of the African Cup of Nations regulations, as well as Articles 82 and 151 of the CAF disciplinary code. Number two, the match number 87, Libya versus Nigeria of the CAF African Cup of Nations Qualifiers 2025, scheduled to be played on 15 October in Benghazi, declared lost by forfeit by Libya by a score of 3 0. The third verdict that they made was that the Libyan Football Federation is ordered to pay a fine of 50,000 US dollars. The fourth verdict was that the fine is to be paid within 60 days of notification of the present decision which was on Saturday and number five all other and further motions or prayers for relief are dismissed. The implication of this verdict by the Confederation of African Football is that Nigeria is now poised to qualify for the 2025 African Cup of Nations with two games to spare and with this decision the Eagles are now on 10 points from four games four points better than second place Benin Republic while Rwanda have five points from four games bottom place Libya the Mediterranean Knights have only one point and are thus out of the running for qualification of the African Cup of Nations to be held in Morocco and victory or draw against the cheaters of Benin Republic in Abidjan on Thursday 14th November March the 5th encounter will land the Super Eagles a ticket to the finals in Morocco uh, for AFCON 2025. I am now being joined virtually by Pius Ahamba, sports presenter, producer, podcaster, content creator and of course um, uh, he's been my guest on some editions of Sports Store, Pius, welcome once again to Sports Store on Enterprise Television. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Joss, uh, for having me on this uh, particular episode of uh, uh, Sports Store. And of course, yes, uh, following you, and uh, it's been a fantastic uh, a job you're doing uh, right there. Yeah, thank Good to you. To be here again. Definitely. Thank you very much for, of course, um, 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 once again, uh, um, um, joining me on Sports Store. And of course, Sweet justice to all of us Nigerians. Libya, they try to, you know, play the normal tactics, the normal tricks that North African teams play when they come, when, when we participate in inter-club competitions. Enimba suffered the same fate. F. Fanimba suffered the same fate. I witnessed it myself February in 2017. Rivers United have suffered the same fate. Remo Stars, MFMFC. Everyone has suffered the same fate against North African sides, but this time around, Libyan, the Libyans went a step further. They tried it with the most marketable team on the African continent, and the whole world of football stood uh, in, in, in Aluta with the Super Eagles of Nigeria, in unison with Super Eagles of Nigeria, and we came, we saw, we conquered, and rightly so, CAF has stamped their feet on the ground, ruled 
a decision that, in fact, I don't think any North African team, both national side and club side, would want to try Cavs' hand anymore after this decision. What, what's your take on this huge decision for African football? Well, um, I mean, uh, like you mentioned, a uh, huge decision for African football and especially for uh, the sports sector in Nigeria. Honestly, I, I expect it to be so because uh, if you take a look at the evidence or evidences in front of us, in front of CAF, as it were, uh, you would see that to probably have a, uh, a better right in terms of a fair judgment. It would be quite surprising and shocking if that, if that judgment had gone um or otherwise and of course i i mean like i again i expected it to be so uh, doing things in a smarter way because i think this trait is only something that's embedded in them it is something that they uh with due respect to that particular uh, part of this uh, of this uh, uh continent i think it is in them so instead of learning from this and adjusting i think they will just Try to do things in a smarter way, and uh, I just want to assist them going to this type of in car competitions going forward. Probably because of, 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 of all of this, uh, but again, it's uh, this black one, uh, a landmark car. In this intro, Pan out are good for up. They have done the right thing, and of course, uh, they have okay, okay. Um, uh, thank you for that one, Pius. And quickly, before we let you go on this issue, um, the Libyan Football Federation have said that they want to appeal, they probably might not even go to FIFA, they might go to the Court of Arbitration for Sports. How do you think that um, appeal case will pan out for the Libyans? Or they are probably just capping and maybe um, they are probably not going to do anything? Well, I mean, uh, Josh, you and I really know that this case is, uh, is uh, a pure legal case. Uh, they will probably have to fight the better um, uh, uh, I better not win because this is not what we would actually debate on TV and then we win. It's what you go and fight with. Not all, I mean, if there are some cases you know that ordinarily this will be happy, but then it, it ends up going the other way just because the other side are prepared or they have better lawyers or they have better evidences, you know, to counter what you have brought. So I think uh, I do hope they are ready to go beyond this uh, because if you say that they have. And then you, don't, you don't want to narrate uh, what these guys can do. You probably want to be, you know, uh, 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 up and doing it all sorts of things. Because then we, I think we should also be better uh, ourselves than them there. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Pius Ahamba, for your incisive analysis on um, the car verdict for Libya versus Nigeria. The botch game between Libya versus Nigeria in AFCON 2025 qualifier. So, uh, moving over to other stories, let's tell that two exquisite first half strikes by Captain Rashid Ajibade in Ikene Remo on Saturday earned nine time African champions Nigeria victory over visiting Algeria in the first of two international friendly games between both countries. First, Ajibade galloped past an unsuspecting rear guard of the Green Ladies and heaved the ball over and above the advancing goalkeeper Amel Salah for Nigeria's first goal in the 24th minute minute following a good pass by defender Oluwa Tosin the main then just before the halftime whistle of the Atletico Madrid uh just before the halftime whistle the Atletico Madrid the uh, feminine midfielder collected the ball from Folashade Ijam Lucy as she broke forward and unleashed a rocket from 25 yards that flew straight into the top corner beating goalkeeper Salah's tame attempt at stopping it and an entertaining game also saw Esther Onyenezide miss from close range in the 44th minute and Folashadi was once again thwarted by Salah in the 66th and 90th minute. Algeria's best chance came in the 75th minute but forward Gladys Ikene saw her chip glide past the goal after escaping the attention of goalie Chamaka Nadozie. 
and also talking about the Super Falcons, the second friendly game between Super Falcons and Algeria's Green Ladies at Mobolaji Johnson Arena, Lagos, will now commence at 2 p.m. as against the earlier advertised 4 p.m. The Nigerian Football Federation explained that the Algerian delegation had opted to commence their return flight on Tuesday night. The two international friendlies were put together by the NFF to help the rebuilding process of the Super Falcons following a below par performance at the Women's Olympic Football Tournament in France this, su this summer and the departure of American gaffer Randy Waldrum. Well, let's move over to what's happening uh, in the Wafu B Under 20 Championship and tell you that cup holders Nigeria reached the final of the tournament in style on Sunday after a come from behind 3 1 thumping of Niger Republic's junior mena in Lome and in the process earning a ticket to next year's AFCON Under 20 championships. The neighbors to the north went in front after only just nine minutes of the second semi-final at the start Kieg. But just as um, the Flying Eagles did against Cote d'Ivoire on Thursday, the seven-time under-20 African champions were unruffled and instead they found a better shape and form and dominated afterwards, scoring three marvelous goals that took them to the finals where they will face with West African art rivals Ghana on Wednesday in the Wafu B under 20 final. Ghana defeated Cote d'Ivoire 2-1 in the other semi-finals to book a spot to face Nigeria. And against the run of play, the junior men came close to doubling the advantage in the third minute, but Nigeria survived and shortly after found the equalizer that their effort merited. Enimba's Clifton Jephthah, who has been mesmerizing so far in this tournament, finished with a plum from outside the box to put the flying Eagles level in the third fifth minute. And after an eye-catching interchange of passes between uh, Padibio, Maigari and Sahilu, Jefta was on song again 30 minutes after the restart, putting Nigeria ahead for the first time in the game. And then the Flying Eagles scored the third goal in other time through Ola Lekon Alonge. In the Dominican Republic, Nigeria's quest to win her maiden FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup ended on Saturday night. Sad news in Nigerian football after all the good news I've been, I've been reading out so far today on Sports Store. And let's tell that after the United States of America scored one goal in each half to send the 2022 bronze medalist packing from the tournament in the Dominican Republic. Coach Bankole Oluokere's game plan was cruelly undermined by injuries to three of his first 11 within the first 45 minutes as forward blessing if it is way was the first to be forcibly withdrawn to be replaced by Peace F. Young. Then left back Onye Dikachi Ekezie was replaced by Rocky Pat Aziz and defender Jumai Adebayo also went down but was able to continue after some minutes. Harmony Chi, the leading goal scorer in the African qualifying tournament, lifted the ball too high from a free kick in the ninth minute and again put too much purchase on her effort in the 28th minute. A minute later, Mary Long struck goalkeeper Christiana Uzoma with an excellent shot in the box, which later did well to parry out for a corner kick. USA, who lost the quarterfinal game to Nigeria in India two years ago on penalty shootout, this time around, went in front from the penalty spot in the 43rd minute through Fuller after Shakirat Moshud had fouled an opponent in the box. It would have been 2 nil in other time, but Adebayo did well to keep out the ball right on the line as the Americans piled more pressure. In the 6th fourth minute in the second half, Captain Taiwa Fulabi snagged the ball from Dittering defenders only to see a shot pied out for a corner and Fuller almost doubled the US's advantage in the first minute but saw her effort narrowly miss the target. Three minutes later, the United States went 2-0 up when a Fulabi was hacked in the midfield and the through ball was converted by Kim Ascanio who put the ball through the legs of the advancing goalkeeper Uzoma to send um, the super uh, uh, to send the flamingos I beg your pardon out of the uh, 2024 FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. A sad one for Coach Bankole Oluwakiri's men who uh, recorded a hundred percent record, leading to the knockout stages of the competition. Well, let's leave issues concerning uh, the Nigerian teams that really, you know, uh, trailed us 3-1. We could say 3-1. We won three games at the weekend and lost one at the weekend. So it was a 
pretty decent run of form for Nigerian uh, 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 national teams of different um, um, eight grade categories and of course the CAF verdict this weekend all across um, the world but let's go over to Europe and tell you that in big leagues across Europe Arsenal and Liverpool could not be separated after 90 minutes as Mohamed Salah scored in the 81st minute to secure a point for the visiting Reds to draw two all at the Emirates Stadium. Bukayo Saka scored first for the Gunners. Van Dijk equalized and Mikel Merino got his first Arsenal goal in the first half. But uh, Salah's 81st minute goal made that game end to all as the two teams shared the spoils in um, a battle among the two teams, two teams that are in the top four in the Premier League. In other games that were played in the Premier League, uh, Chelsea defeated Newcastle United by two goals to one. Crystal Palace won. Tottenham Hotspur nil. West Ham United defeated Manchester United by two goals to one. It's still getting rough for Eric Ten Hag at Old Trafford. Everton played a one or draw with Fulham. Aston Villa and Bournemouth played a one or draw. Brentford 4, Italy Town 3. Brighton and Hove Albion played a two or draw with Wolverhampton Wanderers. Man City defeated Southampton by a go to nil Eli Haaland scoring once again. Leicester City lost at home to Nottingham Forest by three goals to one. In the Italian Serie A, Kenan Yudis needed 20 minutes to salvage his team's unbeaten Serie A run from meeting its end as Inter Milan were ahead 4-2, having scored twice from two first half spot kicks. Piotr Zelinski scoring both times from the spot and two more goals from Henrik Mkhitaryan and there's a dumb freeze to sandwich the goal scored by Dusan Vlahovic and Timothy Weir. And if not for Torquies Yudris, the game would have ended would have not ended for all because Yudris came up from the bench and in 20 minutes turned the game in his head in the Derby d'Italia in the Serie A. In other Serie A games, Fiorentina defeated AS Roma five goals to one. And like I said, Inter Milan played a four-all draw against Juventus in the Derby d'Italia. Uh, Lazio defeated Genoa by three goals to new. Monza played a two-all draw with Venezia. Parma won, Empoli won, Atalanta six. Verona won. Ademar Lukman scored a brace and has set two more goals for Atalanta in that encounter. Napoli won. Lecce nil. Torino won. Uh, uh, Como nil. Udinese two. Cagliari nil. It was another clean sheet for Super Eagles goalkeeper Maduka Okoye. And in El Clasico in Spain, Barcelona continued on their awesome run of form as they added their eternal rivals Real Madrid to the teams that they have destroyed this season coming off the banks of a 4-1 trashing of Bayern Munich in the Champions League Lewandowski continued from where he picked up against Bayern Munich scoring a brace, he almost made a hat trick even up for some wasteful shots from him in uh, the second half all second half goals for Barcelona Rafinha and Lamin Yamal adding extra uh, 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 goals for Barcelona as they humbled Real Madrid 4-0 at Santiago Bernabeu, handing them their first loss in 42 games, uh, in 42 home games in La Liga. And in other La Liga games at the weekend, Real Sociedad lost at home to Osasuna, the only team to have defeated uh, 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 um, Barcelona in the La Liga so far. Osasuna defeated Real Sociedad away from home. Real Betis defeated Atletico Madrid by a goal to nil. Hetafe 1, Valencia 1, Leganes 2, Celta Vigo nil. Real Madrid uh, lost to Barcelona in the El Clasico. Las Palmas 1, Girona nil. Rayo Vallecano with 10 men defeated Girona, defeated uh, Alaves Abega, pardon, by a goal to nil. Uh, Real Valladolid 1, Villarreal 2, Espanyol nil. Sevilla 2 in round 11 of De La Liga. Well, that's how much we can take on Sports Store for the day. Endeavor to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are Enterprise TV 7 on YouTube. Click the notification bell to get alerts on our new YouTube videos. Follow us on all our social media platforms. We are Enterprise TV 7 on Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. Like, share, and engage with our content. And also visit our website, www.enterprisetvnews.com, where we give you all the hot stories on the go, the live updates, the exclusives, and the news 
you can use moreover if you want to partner with us on enterprise television and you want to place your product on our platform and for all the sponsorship and advertising inquiries kindly send a mail to enterprise tv7 at gmail.com or send a dm to our aforementioned social media handles at enterprise tv7 and before we go let's leave you with this quote from the king himself Cristiano Ronaldo dos Santos Aviero. He said, and I quote, I am not a perfectionist, but I like to feel that things are done well. More important than that, I feel an endless need to learn, to improve, to evolve, not only to please the coach and the fans, but also to feel satisfied with my own self. It is my conviction that there are no limits to learning and it can never stop no matter what our age. End quote. Definitely a proof to the man that Cristiano Ronaldo truly is with this quote that I just read out to you. I'm Josh Ike Okoli and I want to thank you for the privilege of your time. Until we meet again, it's goodbye and hasta luego.